everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashley and I'm an architect in Ontario. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about laptops. Now this is a beginner guide to the best laptops for architecture in 2021. Now this is one of the questions I've been getting asked on the channel, what laptops to consider for architecture? Well, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the factors that you should consider when you are shopping for a laptop, what specs to look out for, why should you get a laptop over a desktop, what you'll be using your laptop for, so what specific programs and what kind of power and performance you will need. And I will also be sharing what I use on a daily basis as an architect now and what I used when I was in my undergrad and masters and the mistakes I made and what I've learned in the process as well. And then by the end of the video, I'll be giving out some recommendations of laptops that you should consider. So if you're interested, make sure to like the video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. That helps up the channel and it lets me know that you enjoy this type of content. So if you're interested, let's get started. Let's talk about why you should get a laptop over a desktop. Now it's important to think about what type of computer you want before you get started. Now, one of the reasons why laptops are so expensive in comparison to desktops is because it's so convenient. You can travel around with it, it's portable, it's easy. You basically have a workstation on the go constantly. So you gotta remember that you're paying for that. So you can't really compare a powerful laptop with a desktop because you're gonna notice that it's a lot cheaper. Now, if that isn't important to you, the portability, then getting a desktop might make sense to you. So that's something to take in consideration is to think about what will be easier for you and what fits your lifestyle. Now, another thing that I would keep in mind that having a laptop has an advantage is when you're doing desk crits. So when you are in architecture school, you're gonna be doing a lot of desk crits with your professor or with other students, workshops and so on. So one of the things that is very convenient about having a laptop is you can basically show your work, show your progress, right on the screen versus having to print everything out constantly. Now, I do recommend doing some prints, but you won't have to do them so often. Now, printing is helpful because you get to nail your line work, your graphics and so on, colors and so on, but you won't have to do it as often as you would if you didn't have a laptop. You might have to print a lot more. So there is an advantage of having a laptop, just the ease of it it's portable, you can share your work a lot easier from the screen, and so there's a huge advantage, especially for architecture students and even architects of having a laptop over a desktop. So what exactly are you using the laptop for? Well, if you're using it for architecture, then you're gonna be using 3D programs, Revit, Rhino, SketchUp, and that's only a few, animation, rendering, and those are heavy duty programs. You're also gonna be using it to create 2D animations and graphics, diagrams, and so on, presentations. So you're gonna be using the Adobe Creative Suite, for example, and all of that takes a lot of memory and performance from your computer. So you're gonna to have to look and make sure you understand what you're gonna use your computer for so that you're able to make a really educational purchase. So if you are in architecture, you're gonna need something with a little bit more power, a little bit more memory in comparison to someone that would only use a Word document. So that's something to keep in mind when you are looking for a laptop. What factors? should you consider? Now, this is something important because you should really think about what factors are important to you. For example, for me, design is important. Unfortunately, I try not to think about that design isn't and I've made some mistakes on my purchases. I've gone with what was the better value and I kind of didn't look at design and I wasn't really satisfied with my purchase. And so design for me is really important. How the laptop feels, its materials and the overall design and my enjoyment with the product because you are using it on a daily basis. I mean, I spent all my time on the computer. So for me, that was something that was important. So make sure to ask yourself, is design an important aspect when you are looking into a computer? And so if it is, 
do take note of that because that's something that is important when you are looking into a laptop. I would also recommend getting an SSD card, a solid state drive. It is so much faster with an SSD card. I personally had a computer without it and when I got an SSD card, it was worth it. It is a bit more pricey, but now most computers actually come with it. A lot of laptops now are, have an SD card in it. So I would recommend getting an SSD card because the reboot for your laptop is a lot faster and it just runs a lot better. So I'd highly recommend that. I would also think about your screen resolution. Now, because we are doing a lot of graphic work, I find to myself that the screen resolution and the screen quality is just as important. In order for you to really do good graphics and to really work on graphics, I find that having a good screen quality and screen resolution is important and you should consider that when you are looking for laptops. The other thing you should consider is the weight and overall size of your laptop. This is something I didn't really think too much about and I regret it because the weight of your computer is an important aspect. You're gonna be carrying this every day with you to and from school. And so if it's too heavy, your back is gonna hate you, which was my case. Um, but at that time, it was really hard to find a sleek and small computer that was powerful. But now you can find a good size computer that isn't too heavy. It won't kill your back because you're gonna be carrying this you know, day in, day out. So that's something important to keep in mind. And then I would also recommend keeping your screen size not too big. I would look into perhaps a 13 inch screen and I will explain a bit more on that because it was a bit of a surprise when I got the M1 MacBook Pro and it was a 13 inch computer screen laptop and I was actually surprised by how good that screen size was. It, I had a 16 inch before and the 13 inch was just as good. I can do all the work and it's a lot lighter and smaller to carry around. I talk a little bit more about the M1 MacBook Pro in this video here. So the other thing you should take into consideration is the operating system. What operating system do you prefer? Windows, Linux, you know, think about the operating system and what works best for you. The other item I would think about, but this is not too much of an issue, is storage space. So think about how much storage space you'll need to run all the programs and then how much you need for your files as well. And I would only think about the program space that you need for your programs. And then in terms of files, you can always buy an external hard drive and for a lot more cost effective than getting a terabyte on your computer. And so that's something that I would take in consideration when you are shopping around. Now let's talk about what specs you need. Now you can get away, and I've seen some people get away with eight gigabytes of RAM of memory, but I would recommend 16 gigabytes of memory. I feel like eight is cutting a little bit short and if you can get more than 16 gigabytes, 32 and onwards, even better. You'll need the RAM to do a lot of graphics works, renderings and so on. So I would recommend getting a good amount of RAM because it is important. The other key item is a good graphics card. And I would at least get a good gaming graphics card in order to run a lot of the graphics and a lot of the graphic works that we do. And then of course, I would recommend a good screen resolution, a good quality screen, because that is very important again for your graphic work. And last but not least, I would recommend recommend getting at least storage space of at least 500 gigabytes. Now that sounds like a lot. I would say 200 gigabytes is cutting it a little bit close because you do need to have a good size of storage space just to at least run a lot of your programs without getting into issues and without having to worry about having too many programs and so on. And because we actually use a lot of programs, not just one, two, or three, we tend to actually have at least 10 programs, a lot of us. So I would recommend to have a decent amount of storage space in order to run all these programs. And then for your files, you can always have an external hard drive, at least a terabyte, I would say. Um, so you don't have to worry about space. So with a terabyte, you won't have to worry about space and you can have all your program files and model files in that drive. Let's talk about what I use now and what I used to use. So I use now the M1 MacBook Pro from Apple and I used to use a few other Apple computers, which I will share 
So I used to use this one prior to this laptop. It's from 2015, it's just a MacBook. And as you can tell, it's nice and slim and it's really light. And the reason why I got this laptop was because my 2010 MacBook Pro from 2010 during my master's degree was very heavy to carry and it was really hard on my back. So I ended up getting after graduating and saving up the 2015 MacBook. And I really loved the design. It was nice and small and very light and portable to carry. And that was a great laptop. I didn't want anything super high performance. I just needed to do some light work on it. So I wasn't doing any heavy 3D work, but I have been actually editing some videos off of this. So it was actually quite powerful as well. And uh, prior to that, again, I had this 2010 laptop and this laptop is a 16 inch laptop. So as you can see here, and here I have the M1 uh, MacBook Pro, the 13 inch. So when I had the 16 inch and I went down to the 13 inch, I was a bit uh, concerned because I thought that it wouldn't be as good in terms of the overall screen real estate. But surprisingly, I have to say that the 13 inch screen is just enough. You don't really need the 16 inch. It's nice, you have a bit more room and, and space to work but the 13 inch does the job. And again, you can always use external monitors if you need more screen resolution real estate. But to be honest, I've been doing all my work on this 13 inch and I haven't really missed the 16 inch and it's a lot more portable and easier to travel around in comparison to the 16 inch. So you get a lot thinner laptop. So you see here, this is the M1. And then of course there's some there's a bit of an age difference between both laptops, but you can get a sense of the overall size and the overall screen size between both of them. So I do recommend, I would actually recommend the 13 inch. You don't really need the 16 inches. I find that this is kind of a nice size for a laptop to do your daily work. And then you can always get monitors to have more real estate for your screen. Now, prior to this MacBook Pro, I actually had an Asus and an Asus laptop and it was a gaming laptop and it was gigantic too. I used to call it a spaceship. It was also very heavy and sadly it only lasted me a year it just burnt out. It wasn't able to withhold all the graphic work, 3D rendering and so on. And my, my, my thought process before getting this MacBook was the Asus was a lot, or the Asus was a lot cheaper in comparison to the MacBook and it was, and I was getting a lot more performance, let's say when I was comparing apples with apples. But in the end, the durability, it just didn't last after one year, it didn't last and to be honest, I didn't enjoy the overall design and the overall durability and quality of the laptop itself. So then I said to myself, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and get a MacBook Pro and I still have it. It's still here, it's still, oops, sorry. It's still here, it still works and of course it's not, now it's not because it's so old, it's not compatible with the Adobe Creative Suite, but I can always do a bootcamp and partition my drive and run Windows side and then perhaps then run the Adobe Creative Suite. So that is also an option, but it's still here. It's very durable and so far, I have to say, but the Apple computers have been the only laptops that has lasted this long. I don't have the other ones because they just stopped working and I still have my Apple laptops. They're still here and they're still working. And depending on what I need to do, I still use them. So this is definitely, I would definitely recommend the MacBook Pro line, especially the M1 laptop. Now let's talk about recommendations and I've already spilled the beans because I've already mentioned that the MacBook Pro line is highly recommended. And to be honest, it would be the only laptop that I would recommend is the MacBook Pro. Especially the M1 chip, it's amazing. It outperforms a lot of the laptops I've used in the past. And I've used quite a few. I've used Toshiba, and I can't even remember all of them because I went through so many laptops during my undergrad and the only laptops that have really lasted for me have been the Apple laptops. So the MacBook Pro, this was the MacBook and then MacBook Pro again. So it's been the only ones. Now the only other laptop I would actually consider 
in getting, and I was considering it, is the Dell Alienware. Now, that is a really good line as well, and I would actually consider it. They have some great gaming laptops. The design looks very sleek in comparison to a MacBook Pro. It doesn't stay too behind, and they have some good specs on them too. So I would also recommend those, but to be honest, I can't fully recommend it because I haven't tried it myself, but it was the other laptop that I was considering before getting the M1 MacBook Pro. But I could say full-heartedly that I would recommend the M1 MacBook Pro it's been amazing. It's been absolutely amazing. It's outperformed a lot further than I thought. And again, I did a six month review where you can check out that video, but it's been amazing. And I highly recommend it to anyone that's looking for a laptop to do architecture, 3D modeling, rendering, and so on. So if you wanna hear more from me in your inbox, I would recommend signing up for the monthly newsletter. And you can do this on my website, www ashleyilzebu.com and on the website you can sign up for the monthly newsletter and on the monthly newsletter I share information content and so on to you in your inbox now if you want more information about the m1 macbook laptop I would recommend watching this video here and of course don't forget to subscribe you can do that here I'll see you on the next video until then bye